Okay, so we talked about the difference between a histogram and a bar graph, quantitative variables, uh, categorical variables, and so on. So now this is where I steal from your uh, book, okay? And the steps in making a histogram, okay, are to, uh, first you're, you're given a list of data, okay? And then, then you wanna, I would say one, look at the spread. Look at spread and divide and to divide into into what they call classes or I, they also call it bin widths meaning you're going to take all your data and stuff it into various bins okay so if you're zero to five feet tall you go in this bin oh you wouldn't be zero feet tall so maybe it'd be like four feet to five feet tall you'd be in this bin if you're five feet to five no that'd be a two and that wouldn't work you want to make your bins even width okay so maybe it's four foot six to five feet that would be one bin okay five foot Five feet to five feet six, that would be the next one. Five foot six to five twelve, that would be six feet, right? Yes, sir. What if you're five foot? That's over again. You want to do less than the higher number. Okay, so I'll do an example. So, so yeah, very good point. Okay, you have to decide which bin you're going to go into. So if you're in five foot, you would go into the five foot to less than five foot six bin. Okay, and so, so that's a good question. Yeah, so if so in this, uh, and then three, you just want to uh, divide into classes, bin width, and then three, label the axes and make your label axes, and make your, uh, make it, okay? Make the histogram, histogram. So, uh, so for this data, which came from your book, I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? I steal liberally because it'd be hard to write this all down myself. But um, for this stuff, they are looking at the percent of students in each state. There's really, all this stuff is interesting, you know? Uh, so this is the percent of students who are born in a foreign country who live in these states, okay? And from looking at the big table of data, it's kind of hard to, uh, kind of hard to decipher you know where the majority, where the majority of students live. If you were trying to determine, you know, like where is the mean? What percent of students in the United States were born outside of the U.S.? Um, anyone want to share? Who here was born outside of the U.S.? Anyone want? No one? Yeah, America. No one here. No one here. Okay. Um, I was. The planet Krypton. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Uh, I, I don't know. So anyway, so what they do with this data, okay, is uh, first, so they take it and they, uh, so they they look at the range or the spread, and they said it appears that it goes from zero up to 50, okay? Because looking at um, looking at these uh, students, uh, <coughs> the highest percent is, uh, I mean, not zero up to 50, zero up to 30. <coughs> so it looks like the highest percent California. is 27 point something in California, okay? And so what they said, they said, okay, well, that's about zero to 30, and then they divided by five or, or six, and so they went zero to five, and five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, and so on and so forth. Okay, hi. So what's the scope? Wait, I have to pause. So, uh, so that's what they did. It looks like they divided into one, two, three, four, five, six. And since that makes a nice even five, five uh, a range of five in each uh, bin, or each class, they call them, then they did it this way. Okay, and notice that they say zero to less than five, and five and less than 10, and so on. And that answers Wes's question that he had before. 
about what if you are exactly at five, which place would you go? Where would you go if you're exactly five percent? Five. five to ten. Okay. And so then they also so they computed a frequency table, but they also did a relative relative frequency table. And for those of you who will have to know this tomorrow, relative frequency is when you calculate the percent. Okay. And so out of the whole out of fifty, if you take twenty divided by fifty you get out 40%, and 13 divided by 50 is 26, and that's where those things come from, okay? And then they said, okay, now I'm gonna take this data, and I'm going to graph it, all right? So they take the data, and they make their little histogram, it's hard to, little hard to see, but they, um, how do I, how do I get it to stay in front without that? So, in any case, so you can see this is a graph, a histogram with the uh, percent of foreign born residents, and this is the number of states, okay? So 20 of the states have between zero and 5% of their uh, students, far residents were born there, okay, and between five and ten, that's where uh, 13 states, and so on. And then they computed the same thing with percentages, and notice it looks exactly the same, except over here we have percents, and over here we have the count, okay? So this is a graph, this one's a graph of this, and this one's a graph of this, okay? The other thing they wanted to show you in this case is that if you change your bin width, let me see if I could do this. If we change the bin width to two and a half, okay? So over here, they squish it down in which the categories are only two and a half wide. Notice that that looks, whoops, moving that so. Notice that it looks different than this graph and you can kind of tell more about the graph. In this case, does it appear that there's an outlier in this case? <coughs> Yeah, in this case, it looks like there's an outlier right over here, which corresponds to the one or one that is 25 to 27.5. Who's that? That's a, so it looks like California is an outlier with the number of foreign born residents, right? Where would you say the middle is about by looking at this? Or about where? Somewhere in here, maybe, or looks like between, what's that, five, somewhere between five and ten, I would guess the middle. Now, I'll show you in a minute how to calculate the mean using your graphing calculator and, and the, and the um, median and all that. Talk about it's connected, so I'll show you how to put it. I'm going to show you how to put it in your calculator now, okay? So, you guys all have TI-84 calculators? Yeah. Or 83 or 80 something. Okay. So 89. Yeah, it works with that. I'm just not sure how to do it. So um, y plus. So first, you want to clear all your graphs out, and then you want to go to stat and go to edit, okay? And I think what I'm gonna just do is, uh, and do you guys know, and you get these lists. We're just gonna be working with one list, with list one. So to clear out list one, you go up to the top, the very top where it says list one, and then you hit clear, and then you hit enter, and that will clear out list, list one. Uh, and I'm just going to do the first, the first uh, column over here so that, um, let's see, close that. I'm just going to do the first column of data. Uh, hold on, I'll get it. Blue options is always in front. Okay. So it'll go. Now I should be able to see. So, if I were just to take the first column of data, 
which is uh, move. Move! Why won't that? Uh, you have to ask it nicely. Uh, Okay, so if I were to put all these numbers in, you just type them in, okay? And go, can't see that part, 2.8, did that work? Didn't work. Oh, because I'm not on my calculator. So then I have to go to here, 2.8, did that? Oh, this is complicated. Oh, here, 2.8, why is that not working? So I have to do it like this. I didn't know to use a keyboard before. 2.8, enter. Got it. <laughs> Let's go to. Press enter first. Yeah, you gotta go down one. Down, down one. Oh, I see. I'm not in the. I did it fine at home. Okay. Clear. Got it. So I don't, I gotta go down to that. Now I can take in 2.8, okay? So 2.8, enter, yay. Okay, seven, enter. I'm not gonna do it all, 15.1, enter, 3.8. Um, 27.2, there's California. I used to live there. Uh, 10 point three. Did I mess up yet? Enter 12.9. Uh, and there's lots of software that'll do this stuff too, but since when you're taking a test, you're going to use a graphing calculator, I'm going to show you this now. 18.9. Uh, you could go faster than me, right? 9.2. Let's see if it'll let me use the keyboard. 16.3? 16. Oh, there we go. 23. Okay, then 5.6. And 13 going in. Okay. Go ahead. 4.2. 3.8. 6.3. 2.7. Okay? So, say this is all my data, even though it's not. Okay? Then the next thing I do, I quit out of there, second quit, and I go to second stat plot. Okay? And you turn your, so plot one, you want to turn that on. Okay? So you hit enter, and then you have these choices. Okay? Type. And over here, notice a little thing that looks like a histogram. That's the histogram. And you hit enter. And then list one, um, you go down there. There's a, that means your data is in list one. Frequency, I don't think you have to worry about that. And then you hit graph. And maybe nothing comes up. So what you do is you go zoom, stat which is, I believe, 10, right? Or nine, zoom stat. Do you have to put your plot on too? Mr. Leary, you left the stat plot off. Didn't oh, I did? Actually turn it on. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, that is true. Stat plot. I have to go. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Okay. Honor. That's good. Graph. So you can see that I don't see much of my data. So I'm going to go to uh, zoom stat, which is uh, 9. Is that what it is? 9. And then I get a nice histogram. Now notice if I hit trace, okay? If I hit trace on my calculator, my, uh, my bin widths are not what I want them to be, okay? See this? Because this one appears that it goes from, it just kind of picks, I don't know how it figures out, it out, but it goes from 2.7 up to 7.6. So that's that bin, and the next bin goes from 7.6 to 12.5. So that's not what we want. So what you could do is you could change that, go to window, set the X min to zero, okay? 
ends at the x max to uh, x max to 30. Good. 30. And then set your scale to 5. Okay. That's going to give you 6 spins of width 5. Okay. X scale. And then if I hit graph, okay, it looks different, right? And so that's putting everything into categories 0 to 5. And if you hit trace, you can see um, that one's from 0 to 5. The next one would be to from uh, 5 up to 10, and so on and so forth. Isn't that cool? Now, if you want to get a better look at your data, you might make skinnier bins, OK? And uh, it depends on how much data you have. If you, if you uh, have a lot of data, you kind of want the bins pretty wide. But if you don't have that much data, it might be a better idea to get skinny bins. Okay. Um, the other thing I was going to show you, stat. If you go to stat and calc, <coughs> and you go to one bar statistics, okay. you hit enter, and you hit enter again, then that gives you x bar is the mean, okay? That's the sum of all the x of all the all the values that you put in there. Um, that I believe is a standard deviation that we're not going to talk about. But if you go down, it appears that the mean is 9.8, and the next thing is going to be that we're going to talk about is quartiles and stuff like that. But there's the median, okay? So the median is 8.1. And the mean, if you go back up, is uh, 9.8. All right. So again, that's found in stat calc uh, one variable statistics. Okay. So you could use your calculators and stuff. I know you need know how to add up a bunch of numbers and divide or order them and find the find the mean and all that. Okay. So that's that. Um, I was gonna go through some more stuff quickly. Hopefully, check your understanding. So. We're not going to do this whole problem, but if I did do um, many people that this, so this is IQ scores, ooh, and uh, bell curve. Uh, they want to know if it's a bell curve. The IQ scores of 60 fifth grade students <coughs> chosen at random. Who can give me an idea? Just like how would I, how would I divide up? What classes would I divide up these stats into? What's the lowest one? 82, what's the highest one? 81's the lowest. 81, okay, so 81's the lowest. Where's the highest person? Where am I on air? Sorry. 100? No, I'm just kidding. 100 and, uh, 145. So you're going from 80 to 145. So that's a range of about 65. So how do you think you'd want to divide up your classes from what to what? 82. How many bins do I have? 80 to 145. So say 80 to 150. How much is that? What's 150 minus 80? 70. So probably you'd want to divide 70 by 10, which makes, or 7, sorry, which makes a nice even 10 per <coughs> unit. And uh, I think that's what they did. Okay. And then if you were to graph this data, okay. You get this. Can you see that? Okay. If you graph it, you get something that looks like that. They went exactly what we did. They did 90. And does that appear to be kind of a bell-shaped curve? Yes. yes. Kind of bell-shaped curve, which we'll learn more about as we go. Okay. Um, not done yet. They talk about real quick. Don't. Start packing up, we got five more minutes, okay? They talk uh, quickly about um, using bar graphs, using histograms, sorry, correctly, okay? And the first thing they talk about is this one guy, um, what's his name? Okay. Uh, Joey, I think they say his name is, okay? And, uh, be careful how you make your uh, histograms because maybe you're given a table like this person uh, this person was here and they say 
length, what is it, the length, oh, length of letters, length of words, or something like that. And then they said, um, these are the counts, okay? And these are the lengths of the words. So apparently there are, there's only one word that had 13 letters, three words that had 12 letters, and so on and so forth. But what this person mistakenly did, they used the count, okay, one, two, as their first bin, okay? So between zero and three, they had two things because their count was one in both cases. And over here, between three and six, they had two places, one, two, no, one, one, two, where their count was between three and six, where they should really be graphing the length of the words, okay? So really what should be in this first bin is uh, words that are one to maybe five, one to three long. Then you would have, you would have 16, 41 words in that, oh no, 16, 16 in that bin, and so. And, uh, and just real quick, the last thing they talked about is if you have different sample sizes, okay? if you have different sample sizes, like this person did here, it's, <coughs> so this person, one is, one's a study where they're talking about word lengths in journals, and one's word lengths in like airplane magazines or something like that, okay? This had a much smaller sample than this, so this whole graph appears pushed down. So what they do in this case is they actually, count, instead of doing the frequency, they did the percents, and then the bar graphs look much better, okay? So you gotta make sure if the sample, if you're comparing two samples, and they have a different amount of data in each one of them, and you got to uh, do it. You have to calculate the percents. And your homework is right there, page. Whoa, look at all that stuff. There, where did it go? You can see that. It's on my website, too. And we will have a short quiz tomorrow on those first two sections or so. Page 45. And I'll give you stuff back. And you got three minutes. You're rushing me and rushing me. It's like, oh, I gotta hurry up. They're all packing up their stuff, but I got three minutes left. So, chill. The English. Yeah. Oh, I get your books covered. I didn't check that. If you don't have your book covered by the end of the week, you're gonna lose. 100 points, no, 5 points. 5 points. And I'll give homework back while you're taking the quiz. Do you have any questions? Oh, cool calculator. Thank you, I know, I got it. What's SSCP? Sensible drug. It's actually a pro drug thing or anti-drug thing? Is that called the safe haven law? In no effect? What's that? It's where, like, say, if there are two people doing, like, doing illegal substances together and one of them is overdosing, then they can call an ambulance and help save their lives and neither party would be in trouble. Well, I mean, that's a smart of drug being in someone's life. I mean, it's a smart of not doing anything in the first place, so then there won't be any harm in the future. I mean, if that's an issue, if people aren't aware of the harm of the Okay, Wes. Yeah.
Jenica's here. All right. We can start now. You ready to learn about statistics? Oh! I recorded this stupid video and I've been talking the whole time. I hate when I do this. Now what do I do? Stop. <laughs> 